This is Fedora 25 KDE with the Plasma 5 desktop. Now as you can see, it's using Plasma version 5.8.5 .5 and kernel version 4.9.4. .4. When I first installed it yesterday, which is about two months after it was released, it was using Plasma version 5.8.1 and kernel version 4.8.3. So this shows the beauty of Fedora, that it upgrades practically everything as time progresses. I've already made quite a few changes to this system. I've chosen the Breeze Dark theme. It didn't come that way. It came with the Fedora theme, which I changed it to Breeze Dark. I also changed the desktop theme to Breeze Dark. Now this is the desktop background that it came with. Uh, there aren't a lot of choices. This is the typical Fedora background that's available on the GNOME version, the XFCE version, etc. Configure desktop. As you can see, there's only two choices. This is the KDE Visual Design Group background, and this is the default background. So. I've used the KDE background before, so I'm sticking with the Fedora background this time. One thing I did under Tweaks, I unchecked Show the Desktop Toolbox. That's that little rectangle that's usually in the upper left-hand corner that you really don't need because there are other ways of configuring the desktop. I haven't made any changes to the bottom panel this time. Some of my other videos about KDE going all the way back to Kubuntu 1604 show various tweaks to KDE, and that procedure hasn't changed, so I'm not going to really go into that much now. Let me say that I'm using Simple Screen Recorder, which is now available in the RPM Fusion repositories. And I also installed Voco Screen, but I'm not using it right now. However, I was unable to make a screen recording until I disabled compositing. Compositing comes enabled by default. And to find that, all you have to do is search for it. Compositor. Notice here that I have unchecked Enable Compositor on Startup, so it's not currently running. Before that, I was unable to make any screen recordings. Now, I've also made a number of other changes. I'm using the application menu. This particular version of KDE came with the application launcher. I'm not going to go into it here, but as I've said before, I don't like it. So I chose the application menu. And as it says here, that's a launcher based on cascading pop-up menus. I've also installed some things that weren't originally here. Under administration, I've installed the yum extender. It wasn't initially included, and of course that's the DNF version now. 
I haven't changed anything under development or games. Under graphics, uh, basically I installed LibreOffice, so LibreOffice Draw shows up under graphics. I haven't changed anything under internet. As you can see, there was quite a bit available under internet. Uh, it came with the Firefox web browser enabled. It also has Conqueror and Quapzilla. But I haven't used either of those. Under multimedia, I installed a simple screen recorder, VLC media player and vocal screen all of them from the RPM Fusion repositories. Under Office, it came with Caligra, Sheets, Stage, Words. However, I installed the entire LibreOffice suite. Now change under Settings. Now change under System. I want to note one thing. It came with Discover. And this is one instance in which Discover worked. I haven't been able to get it work in previous versions of the Plasma 5 desktop. One of the things you'll notice that's different about this version, they've gotten rid of the animations at the top, which seem to be causing a lot of trouble. Everything is categorized so that you can look under accessories, accessibility, development tools, IDEs. The Fedora workstation in general is geared toward developers so there are usually a lot of development tools. as you can see here. Localization, profiling, web development. Here's education. Science and Engineering, and here are the, the subcategories, Astronomy, Biology, Chemistry, etc., Mathematics, Physics, I won't go into all of these. Games, I, as I've said before, I don't play games, I'm too old for that. And should I say this, I was too old when I first began using computers. A lot of people who played games in their youth continued to play them in their old age, but in my youth there weren't any computers. So graphics, There's a lot here. Internet, just under web browsers, for instance, there's quite a bit. IceCat, which is the GNU version of Firefox, Dory, which is a lightweight browser that frequently comes with Fedora.
Cupzilla, as I said. And there's a Tor browser launcher. Multimedia. May I say that uh, Discover is somewhat like the GNOME software utility. There's a lot that isn't in it. I was able to use Discover successfully, but I did most of my work with the Yum Extender and just with the command line DNF protocol. Under uh, Office, this is just a typical example. All they had under Office was LibreOffice Base. Under Office, all they had was LibreOffice Base, which is the LibreOffice database. They didn't list any other LibreOffice applications either before I installed LibreOffice or since I installed LibreOffice. I installed LibreOffice with the Yum Extender. So Discover now works, but it's still not very comprehensive. Under Systems and Settings, you can see Discover itself is in here, and it says Remove, so that means it's installed. Interestingly enough, GNOME software is in here too, but I haven't tried using it. So anyway, that's a brief look at Discover. Now there is another software manager, or called Software Management. I tried using this one. And it crashed. I haven't tried it since. But anyway, you really don't need this. I don't know where it came from or why it's here. And there's another one. Apper. It looks very similar to the previous one. I haven't tried using this. And as I said, I installed Yum Extender. And I've demonstrated this before in other versions of Fedora, so I'm not going to go into it in detail here. Here's what's going on while I have simple screen recorder running. My CPUs are running. Just below the mid-range generally. And I'm using 0 0.92 gigabytes of my 3.7 gigabyte random access memory. Zero swap, of course. I wouldn't call this lightweight, but I would probably call it the medium weight, and considering that I have simple screen recorder running, it's not too bad. As often as I've used Fedora, I've never used the KDE version before, and there were so many interesting KDE-based systems this time that I really ignored this one, but I decided to try it, and I must say that it's one of the better ones I've used. It's not the absolute latest, but it's very close to the latest KDE Plasma version, and it continually updates, and while KDE Neon updates the KDE version 
of the software. It leaves the increasingly old Ubuntu portion intact. I haven't done anything with the many plasma widgets, but you can find them. I right clicked on the background and of course you can get that if you like it. And you can remove it if you don't like it. I've gone over a lot of these before, so I don't want to belabor the point now. Weather forecast. Doesn't do anything until you enter some information. Location. Chicago Midway Airport. Oh, this gives you many, many options. I'm going to select Chicago Midway Airport NOAA and apply. And all of a sudden, all that weather information appears. 55 degrees Fahrenheit. On January 21st, 2017, almost a summer day for January. So that's Fedora 25 KDE edition. It gives you the full advantage of Fedora, which is continuously updated and upgraded software, together with a desktop that is much more usable and much more configurable than the default GNOME desktop. This is XRAM Tech. Thanks for watching.